Welcome. Today what we're going to do is talk about retrieving and parsing data from the web, particularly universal product code data or UPC data. So products like, like this, uh, these caffeine capsules or like this monster drink all have UPC labels on the back. And we know them best for going through the checkout stand and, and the, the person at the checkout stand will scan it so that we can pay for it. But there, is all, there are also many repositories on the web that have UPC data that we can retrieve, put into our databases to build, uh, to build a database for our, our products that we sell out of our store or any of our own retail businesses. So what I want to show you today is how to retrieve that data and how to get it cleaned up so that you can use it in your business. Now, the Access Database here is a UPC lookup database that I put together in order to, you know, retrieve that data and parse it off and make it look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scanner. Well, I'll go ahead and scan it there. And as you can see on the, in the database field, it put the UPC in there. And when I click the button here that I have, you can see that it has pulled data just that quickly from the web. Now, this is the table that I have it being dropped into. The table, of course, shows this big blob of data. Now, this blob of data is in what they call JSON format. And, and frankly, there's not a good way to get it into access this way. So I'm going to show you toward the end of the video, so stay clear till the end, uh, show you at the end of the video how I actually parse this data off and put it into a table. So I made another form to show that it uh, shows up in the table. This, is, uh, this form is set to look at only the last UPC that I retrieved from the web. And if we close that, we have a title here that I parsed off and the description. And what I want to do is show the code that is involved with this database. Now, what you'll notice, you'll have to dimension a few different variables. Uh, I want to dimension a var variable called reader, which is the data that I'm sending. Um, I want to have a URL that I'm going to send. I'm going to define that as a string. And I'm going to ha have to set up a database and a record set. Now, these are this information on how to use those is found in other videos, so you can go check those. Now, the URL is going to equal the database that I'm going to go after. In this database, it's UPC item D database. Now, that's the name of the database, and then they give you this API call here that shows you how to call their data. So it shows HTTPS, it shows the address, and then it says e UPC equals. So I'm concatenating a value that I'm going to send to this um, function called UPC. Notice up here, UPC comes to this as a string. Now, when I clicked on that button, what I did is I had an on click command that sent this UPC value to this function and then immediately calls the function. So. What I'm going to do then is open the reader to get, and then I'm going to pass the URL and the a value called false goes in there. And then we're, I'm going to send it. Now I'm opening the reader here, sending the data to the website here. And I keep on looping here because I want it to wait until I get the ready state of four, which basically means that the website has told me that it is sending data. Okay. At that point, uh, if the reader status is 200, which is a successful read, I then set my database to the current database and open a record set called JSON. Now the record set is a table, a table called JSON, and I'll show that to you in a bit. Then I'm going to open the Dynaset, and then I'm going to database see changes. I'm going to add a new record. I'm going to record add that record into input text, which is the name of the field. And then I'm going to send it the reader response text, which is what's coming back from the website. And then I'm going to update the table. I'm going to do events and 
if I don't get data, I'm going to just say reader status, connection not made, error code, and give an error code. Okay, so I'm going to trap any error that comes back that's other than a message 200. Okay, 200 is my success. I consider all else not successful, and I'll throw back an error code in a message box. So now, here I, I've imported. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a new one. Let's do this monster drink here. I'm going to go ahead and scan this one and see what I get here. So it put in the code and now I'm going to click import and now it splashes here. Now notice that this is the table. It added a new record down here that says Montra, Monster Ultra Paradise Energy Drink. Okay. Now it put in this new record. I have the two forms just showing me the latest record. So here's my blob. Here's the blob that I want to work with and parse off the information. Now, you'll notice in a JSON that you'll have a title, a lot like an XML file. You'll see title here, and then you'll see in quotations the information on the, on the title, okay? 16 fluid ounce can is the last of it over here, okay? A lot cleaner description than what we got with the uh, caffeine tablets here, which is nice. So the description um, is obviously a marketing type description. Where is paradise? A chalet on the slopes, you know, all that high flutin language that marketing people like to throw at you. But that's the description they give here. And so when I get done doing this, I can parse the title and the description off. Now, how did I do that? That's the key here, is we want to find out now how do you parse that data off? And I'm, I'm going back to the PowerPoint because I need to show share with you a function called the instring function, I-N-S-T-R. And what it returns to the user is a number. And so I'm going to give it a batch of text. I'm going to give it either text in quotes where I tell it what text, or I'm going to give it a field. And in this case, I'm going to give it the field called input text. It's going to tell me a number of where the location of certain text is. But start is a number position to start at for the particular text we're beginning at. If you leave it out, it starts at the beginning of the text. String one is required because it's the string being searched. So that's the input I'm going to give it for um, the input text field. Okay. String two is what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to look for first is I'm going to, in this big blob, I'm going to look for the word title. And then I could compare it with two strings if I wanted to, but very seldom do you actually do this piece, piece of it. Okay, now how did I implement that? So let's, let's go look at what, it, what the actual code looks like. The first thing I have to do is I have to find where title is. And so the first thing I do is I'm going to do in string, here's my text, and here's the word title. So it's going to give me a number of where the first letter of title is. Then what I did here was I embedded two in string functions. Notice this. This first piece of it is the number of where to start looking for the text. Okay. Then I'm going to say, okay, starting here, I want the next CHR34 string. And CHR34 is the code for the quote mark. So I'm going to look for the instance of the first quote mark. Then, now that I know where this first quote mark is, this in string has returned a number. So I'm going to start with key end the number I got from this first field. Now, I'm taking advantage of the fact that in a query, queries get evaluated from left to right if you're looking in the query by example grid, or they get evaluated top down when you're seeing the actual SQL. So having key end first tells me, okay, where's my CHR, where's my first quote at the beginning of the title field? And then I'm going to move one more character beyond that because I don't want the quote. I want the first letter. And then I, so I'm going to start at the, uh, at that first letter. Here's my input text. And I'm going to go to the next 
instance of CHR string. So that's going to tell me what my start number is. My end number is the start here, the beginning of my title, and input text to the next quote. Okay, so now I've got my title put together. So now I know the beginning and the end of my title, the start number, the end number. And then now I'm going to just do a simple math problem. The length is going to be the end minus the start. And then I'm going to subtract one from it because end minus start needs to be minus one in order to work out properly. And then I have my title is the midstring of the input text starting here and going to the length. Okay, so how does this work in real life? So if we go and actually look at the title one here, and I put it in design view, you can see that here, now, now you can see why I put it on the screen a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Here we have key and the end string, locating where the, the word title is, and then we're gonna go to the end of the word title and identify where that is. Then we're going to figure out where the start of it is, where the end of it is, what the length of it is, and then we're gonna extract the title out of what we found there. So what happens then is we can see the title and description there just like that. There are a lot of other items in here such as uh, the currency that it's being uh, priced at and um, all different items that I didn't feel. The list price is down here, so you could pull the list price out. The list price and the, uh, and the price, obviously there's two. Uh, the condition in this particular SKU says that it's new. So you can grab a lot more information out of here. The challenge is that, notice the difference in size between these two. A lot of that difference in size is the description, but some of that difference of si in size sometimes is because they may not include particular fields, like lowest recorded price. I don't see lowest recorded price up in this one. So sometimes it's a little inconsistent as to which fields they fill in and which fields they don't. That can be a problem if you're trying to retrieve certain information that exists in some of the records, but not in others. You will just get an error message. It'll return a blank. But I, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you liked this particular video, please, you know, hit that like button and please subscribe and you'll get more videos to come. Uh, it's been a long time since I posted because of uh, losing my voice. And you can probably tell my voice is a little bit raspy, but I hope to see you again and I hope to be making uh, more frequent videos here in the near future. Yeah. Thank you.